hi and hello and good afternoon. Welcome to Vinyasa Yoga with me, Yogi Cecily, here on Facebook Live at my wonderful little studio in Antioch, California. I'm so excited to bring yoga to you today. All right, before we get started, yes, I want to give you all of the little highlights and all of the tags and all of the places you can find me. First up, you found me here on Facebook, but you might be watching on YouTube. On YouTube, it's youtube.com slash Yogi Cecily. Oh, sorry, youtube.com slash C <laughs> slash Yogi Cecily. On Facebook, facebook.com slash Cecily V as in Victor, G as in guest. Did you get all that? All right, because I'm moving on to Instagram. It's instagram.com slash Cecily underscore yogi. Uh, all right, great. And of course, my website, www.com slash Cecily's Yoga Retreats.com. I got a lot going on. I will be posting my October master classes soon. And also, on all social media, I'm doing a September yoga challenge. And if you've been following the challenge, the first five days was yoga poses, yoga asana, right? And now we're in the third day of yogic breath work and I did post today so if you want to follow everything the easiest place to follow everything is on Instagram remember on Instagram I'm Cecily underscore yogi so you can find me there and just go all the way back to the first of September and catch up we'll be moving on to meditation next and then from there we'll be looking at vinyasa sequences which is what we're here to do today some vinyasa yoga yes no yes I know you're with me all right, what shall we focus on today? Recently, I focused on beginner poses, and then I sort of ramped up a little bit and got back into some traditional vinyasa. You know, today I want to look at, oh my goodness, arm balances, the whole thing on the hands, on the arms. We will warm everything up. We will get in some good stretches, but let's pick a focus and sort of work from there. Yes, deal or no deal, you say deal. All right, fantastic. To get us going, you're gonna start down on your mat. And I do wanna make sure that uh, everyone has yoga blocks. You do wanna make sure you have blocks today. And uh, we're gonna start warming up the wrists. So your hands are out in front, you're on all fours, spread out your fingertips, tuck your tailbone, bring your belly button to your spine. Hey, and we move all of the body energy forward, and it's almost as if we're going to do an upward facing dog, but really push into your hands and back. We'll take seven more. I like to inhale here, exhale back. And six, what I want you to notice is the straightness of the arms, and five, and that my shoulders go forward of my wrists. Inhale, four, exhale back. Lean, lean into it, three, exhale back. Lean into it, two, and exhale back. And one more, one, and exhale back. So these are wrist openers, right? Great, next up, I'm gonna turn and face you. Gotta get my feet tucked in here underneath the bench. And hopefully you'll be able to see that my fingertips are turned inward. Now you're gonna push right and left right and left fingertips are pointing in and we're pushing right and left see how give me eight more of these and seven make sure your arms are straight six and five you don't want to bend at the elbow four three see how i'm really pushing in two and one we do the same thing with the heel of the hands together see how my fingertips are pointed out and lean right and left this is a nice high repetition here 14, 13, so we just keep going right to left. Oh. See the challenge on the wrist? Give me eight more. Eight, many, many people don't realize. Seven, the arm balance is six. Five, have a lot to do with the strength. Four more, three, the strength and flexibility at your wrists, two and one. It's really, really hard to believe. I'm gonna face the other way. You can always face any direction you like. And we're going to turn the fingertips back. Are you feeling this already? Already it's like, oh my goodness. So same thing. Here the emphasis is going back though and only a little forward. You've got to really, really push back. Seven and forward. So this is forward to back. Six and 
five. This will get you into one of the hardest arm balances, four more four, which is Mayurasana. Many, many people don't uh, get Mayurasana three because of the wrists. And two, your wrists aren't flexible enough. And one. All right, we deserve a downward facing dog after that. Your fingertips facing the other way. Those drills, we're gonna do those drills again. And hey, hey now, those drills are great for beginners as well as veterans. If you are new to yoga, you're a little bit more of a beginner, it might feel just like, oh, this, this feels really intense on my wrist. But what I wanna tell you is, if you warm up with these drills, everything else seems easy after this. So let's uh, cut down the repetitions a little bit. Let's go forward and back six times. Forward, look at how my shoulders and my head goes way forward of my tick fingertips. Five, right, and back. So you really have to try to feel almost like you're gonna fall. Four, keep your arms straight, three, Keep your elbows pointing back, two, yes, 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 and one. So you already feel the area around your wrist warming up. Now here I'm gonna turn this way and get my fingertips pointing in towards each other. They're almost touching. See how the arms are straight? And then let's go 12 and 11, side to side. 10, you go as far as you can, and five. Four, look at the amount of flexion at the wrist. And three, it's right. Two, you're trying to get less than 90. You're trying to get something more acute than 90. Oy, 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 oy. Good, and center. Now it's the same thing, fingertips pointing out. Probably already 12, 11, you're not liking this class. <laughs> Ten, and nine. Eight, what I want to tell you, seven, give me six more, and five, many of these drills I put together for to help my students acquire the arm balances that, I, that they want. Three, give me two more, and one more. Let's face the right side of the room with fingertips a point back. And I will uh, say to students, if this work is uncomfortable, and you don't like it, take five more, uh, then the arm balances, you're really gonna struggle with them. Four, and that's, and that's that, you know, three, it really is a struggle. Breathe, breathe, now push back. Two, see how you're trying to get less than that 90 degrees, and one, whoa. We deserve a downward facing dog, and you can feel when you turn your hands around a downward facing dog, how that is such a relief. So I'll go back to speaking to beginners. A lot of beginners feel that downward facing dog is a challenge for their wrists. And I would say do those wrist drills and, and then finally downward facing dog feels like a relief. It feels like you just wanna hold here and stay here for an awfully long time stretching things out. Beautiful, now we're going to bend at the knees, arch the back, look up, inhale, and exhale, downward facing dog, send energy back, 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 back. Open the armpits, yes, 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 and four more, bend, arch the back, look forward, inhale, and exhale, downward facing dog, good, and bend, three more, inhaling, Exhaling, push back, push back, way back. Enjoy that, yes, and one more, bending, inhaling. Exhaling, press back, way back, way back. All right, and bend your knees. Well, there's no way around it. We have to do push-ups. Oh, So you have to remember, what is an arm balance? You know, an arm balance is really the ability of the upper body to generate pressure into the floor so that you can do whatever you want with your legs. It's just that. So if your wrists aren't strong, the arms aren't strong for push-ups, you're going to struggle with um, arm balances. Again, arm balances are the ability for your upper body 
to push into the floor and generate enough pressure into the floor so that you can do whatever you want to do with your legs, right? So from here, we got to do some push-ups. Let's do on the knees and on the toes. Now for my gentlemen out there, folks who are used to doing straight line push-ups, please do do the ones on the knees because that's going to generate suppleness in the pelvis and the spine. This is a back bender, so we're first on the knees. Look at how look at the curvature in the back. You really, really want this. And then we tuck the toes and we do one straight line push up on the toes. Well, so everybody has a job. <laughs> Every part. So this is arching the back. Look at the elbow bending, push up. And then straight line on the toes. Sure, one more, one more set. On the knees, please, everyone, even if you can easily do straight line push-ups, you know, getting this curvy back might be the challenge. Pushing up is definitely the challenge once the body gets down. So here's the arms, create enough pressure to the floor that you can do what you want with your body. Okay, child's pose. Oh my goodness, is this class over yet? Mm, nope. <laughs> All right, let's do another favorite drill of mine. I'm going to come on down and put my elbows down and dig it, sweet peas. Look what we're gonna be doing. We're just tapping the elbows. Tap, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. How many more? Mm, one, two, three, five, six. Sometimes don't ask. Nine and 10. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six. Are you with me? Eight, nine, and 10. Hello, four sets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Three sets. One, two, three, four, five, six, you love it, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two more, one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Whoa, we deserve a child's pose with the arms to the rear. All right, if you did that exercise with me, what do you think about it? Is it the bomb? <laughs> It's the bomb. It is. I'm going to tell you why. You're just resting. Come on down here and rest. Rest your arms. Good. Now let's sit up. Why is it the bomb? Because all you feel is tricep. It's like, wait a minute. There you've been in the gym doing kickbacks with dumbbells and, doing, and you didn't realize that all you need is 100 repetitions of this. That, that's it. So what are we working on today? It is vinyasa yoga, but we want to have an emphasis today on upper body, right? Upper body strength, upper body poses, which is mostly the arm balances, right? And so I feel responsible to give you the drills to get you there. If the drills are hard, if the drills are uncomfortable, muscles burning, then you know where to put yourself on the map towards the goal of these poses, right? Let's do push-ups on the knees, push-ups on the toes. Push-ups on the knees will get you to chin balance because you're understanding how the elbows point back and how your chest and your chin go down. Push-up on the knee, one. Push-ups on the toes helps you generate enough pressure to the floor while keeping your body nice and long and strong. Good. On the knees, arch the back, drop the chin and the chest, and push on the toes, right? So we need these two, we need these two abilities before we start even getting into the arm balances, I arch the back and push, and one more on the toes. Look at the long legs, we'll tuck the tailbone, broaden the chest, and here's on the toes, and push. All right, ooh, uh-uh, that's a lot. But this one, this one right here, are you with me? Now don't leave me, right? Those of you out there on YouTube, on Facebook, I know you all are like, ooh, press pause. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm doing it. Look at my shirt. It says, be kind. 
if Steven is watching, isn't this the cutest shirt? Be kind. Ah, let's be kind. Let's just get it done. Yes, it's going to burn, but it's really good for us. All right. 100 we go. Oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 3. 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 4. 1, 2, burning. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. Halfway. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9. That's 6. 1, 2. Now it's killing. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 10 more. 10, 9, 8, 6, 5, four, three, two, and one. Whoa. Child's pose with the arms to the rear. Oh my goodness. Okay. Whew. So you do all that uh, at least twice a week. Yes, do all of that. All of that we did the wrist openers and all of this little drill here, the push-ups and the triceps, twice a week. And trust me, your arm balances are going to go so well. They're going to go so much better, okay? What do we want next? I know. Let's do a vinyasa sun salute with the crow pose. To do this, we'll start in the middle of the mat. Middle of your mat. Big toes together. Oh. Ankles together. Yeah. Let's straighten out the legs. Oh, it feels so good to get into the legs to not be in the arms. We like that. And let's hold on to the elbows and let's do pedal pushers. You know, I, I like doing pedal pushers in the forward fold. So it works just like in downward dog. Bend one knee and lift a foot and then keep changing. Look how one leg is straight and the other one is bent. Take four more, oh yes. Three more, oh yes. Two more, oh yes. One more and down. Good, let's just sweep the arms. Put a little bend and straighten in the legs. <sighs> Yes, get into the legs, out of the arms, four more. Kind of like skiing, three, skiing down, two, and one, nice. Hold on to the back of the legs, the ankles draw down, gently, 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 great. And then from here, a chair pose, Utkatasana. Let's begin the salute. Utkatasana, the chair pose. Don't worry about reaching too high, just oh, get into the legs. Get into the legs, get into the legs. Good, stand all the way up, inhaling. Exhale, forward fold. Squatting on toes, all the way down on toes. Arms out in the front, Bakasana the crow. Well, we lean in, the knees are on the arms. Lift one foot, lift one foot, three, just one foot, two and one. Push off, step back to plank. Chaturanga Vinyasa. <laughs> Upward facing dog, oh yeah, and downward facing dog. All right, we like that, we like that a lot. Okay, good, which means now we're gonna jump to the middle and let's jump that three times. Let's go forward and back, forward and back. Breathe, forward and back, breathe. One more, forward and hold. Great. Big toes together, ankles together, forward fold, enjoy the stretch. Right, relax the arms. Then the chair pose, Utkatasana. Yes, here we go. Utkatasana. Don't worry about the arms. Just, just let this sort of be a nice salute so your arms can relax. we standing all the way up, inhaling. Exhale, forward fold. Now comes the crow, squatting on toes. Arms are on the knees. Look forward and then lean, rock forward into your crow. Lean forward, lift one foot. Just one foot, who cares? Just lift one foot. When you get one foot really, really well, you'll sort of discover that one day the other foot will go. Step back to plank. 
Chaturanga Vinyasa. Mm -hmm. Working, working, working. Upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Great. Hold your downward facing dog. Breathe. Three. We love it. Two. Yes, yes. One. Jump forward and back. Yes. Three. Look at the knees bending and back. Two, inhale, exhale, and back. Get that good diaphragmatic breathing. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose, exhale. And we jump to the center one more. Squatting on toes, A. I'm sweating today. I'm gonna have to get my towel in a moment, okay? You have your towels and your water. You always have those things there with you. So what do we have? Straight legs forward fold here. Mm, lovely. What's nice about the combination with the arm focus uh, is that you're you're not uh, you're not like oh you know today is all about stretching the legs. So you can just sort of be very uh, casual and relaxed. You know, don't worry about how low you're going. Use a block if your hands don't get to the floor, right? So it's just not even about those things. Here's your chair pose. Ooh, katasana. Yeah. So I'm not even worrying about how high the arms go. Just trying to sit back, trying to keep my neck and my shoulders relaxed, not worrying about how high. We stand all the way up, inhaling, and exhale, forward fold. This is your final crow pose. Squat down, yeah. You've got to get your knees on your arms, yeah. This is the last one here this way. So we're gonna lift up and push in. And the further, this is why we warmed up the wrist because the further forward your head, the more your head is pushing forward, the easier it is to lift the feet. Three, yes, yes, two, and one, the feet. Go down, yeah, and we step out to plank. Chaturanga Vinyasa, Chaturanga, upward dog. And that's why we do all of those push-ups so that your Chaturanga is nice and strong. Great, downward facing dog, whoopee, good. Bend your knees down and take a child's pose with your arms behind you, great. Good, 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 yeah, I mean, uh, that's a lot of work. God bless, yeah, I'm stepping out of frame. God bless. That's a lot of work. I know. So let's come on up. So do you see? Now, so the entire first half of this class, excellent. Bravo. This is exactly what we want, right? We want this level of work, and if you're really, really tired in your arms, then that's, that's yeah, that's where you are. Let's move on. It's almost all arm work. I am going to break things up. Don't worry, don't freak out, but let's look at Twisted Crow now. Yeah, let's look at Twisted Crow now. Then we're gonna to try to put it into a vinyasa. Now I also have tutorials on all of the arm balances on Instagram. And remember the handle is Cecily underscore Yogi. The first thing we want in the Twisted Crow, we're gonna take the left arm up, inhale, cross the elbow over. Take another breath, inhale, and then put both elbows on the body. Lean in, five, four, three, two, and one. Come to the center, straight legs forward fold, inhale, exhale. Why not? Chair pose, Utkatasana, lift up here. I'm gonna separate my arms, right? Take the deep breath, inhale, then cross over the twisted chair to the right. Twist in, five, four, three, twisting, two, keep your knees together, ankles together, and one, straight legs forward, fold. This chair pose again, nice wide arms so we can breathe, lift up, be kind, <laughs> yeah, lift up, inhale, right, and then twist, that, that kindness, you know, what goes with it, patience, mm. right, so right when you want to like yell at someone, you're like, mm, nope, <laughs> straight legs forward fold and you're like I'm going to be patient give them a chance to get it let's stand all the way up inhaling 
exhale, forward fold again, and then squatting. And then right from that patience, you're like, eh, might as well be kind, yeah? Let's go. Uh, left hand down, right arm up. And you're going to lean in. Inhale, exhale, twist. Just put both elbows on the leg. It's impossible to do unless your elbows are touching your body. And it's as simple as that. Put your elbows on your body, feel, feel the weight of your body, and then push off, straight legs forward fold. Yes, yes, yes. So you see I'm putting the crow poses with the chair pose, Utkatasana. Mm -hmm. Standing all the way up, inhaling. Left side, twisted chair, dig in, twist in five, four, five, three. So it's all about the legs to the right, the ribs to the left and twisting. Straight legs, forward fold, relax your neck. And then here we go, Utkatasana, the chair pose, wide arms. Standing, inhale, exhale, twisting right. Sometimes I do use my hands on the arms, get a nice, good, deep twist, breathe. Three, twisting there, yes, yes, two. So there's your chair pose, Utkatasana and one straight legs forward fold. Stand all the way up, inhaling, and exhale, forward fold. Squatting on toes. We'll do this again. If you have the full twisted crow with bent knees, yep, then take the full pose. Otherwise, just lean your body in on your elbows, and then see if maybe one foot will come up, and then the other one might come up. Five, four, hold. Three, yeah, two, and oh, one. Let's go to the other side here now. Both hands, both elbows on the left side. Push in, elbows in on the body, then lean in. You'll see one foot might come up. It's five, four, breathing, three. See, this is an action of your legs. Two, that up and down action in the legs. And one, great, straight legs, forward fold, hug down. Then the chair pose, Utkatasana, with nice wide arms. Yes, standing inhale, right side twisted chair. I'm gonna inhale, twist and exhale, place the prayer position. But then this time, go ahead and take this arm over the back. Your left hand, pushes your right shoulder back and away. So it helps you finish the idea of the twist through the shoulders. Forward fold, hands down. Chair pose, arms up nice and tall. Ooh, katasana, hi, yeah. Then stand inhaling, left side twisted chair. I tell you, it's so nice, or I hope you feel that it's nice to uh, take these uh, online classes, social media classes, and just focus. Just focus on a couple of things for one hour. You don't have to do a full, full-on class, right? Good, straight legs, forward fold. All right, step your feet apart into my favorite pose, Prasarita, Prasarita. Parutanasana, Prasarita, Prasarita. I have a friend who calls it party asana. Par party asana. I think that's funny. Sometimes the Sanskrit is hard to hear. And I, lo I love it when students just change the name. It's like, oh, party asana. Yeah, party. Prasarita. Prasarita. Parotanasana. Okay, we turn to the right side. Downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale. All right, bend your knees down to all fours. Work with me here. Let's sit back. Now we're going to load a knee on the elbow from all fours, come to all fours. Your left leg, start with your left leg, straighten it out behind you. Load the knee high above the elbow, then bend down, bend. See the face goes to the floor and then we just go back to all fours. I wanna do four more times with the left leg, then we'll change sides. So left leg straight, get the knee above the elbow, lower your body down like a push up and up and back and back. Straighten the leg, inhale, 
bring the knee forward and then drop the body lift the knee look how the right knee is going to lift and then back mm -hmm. two more straight leg behind knee above above the elbow yes bending bending dropping and push and back one more straighten the leg reach reach knee above the elbow yes your head goes down and your booty goes up and there is your whole pose sort of a basic kundanyasana exhale lovely step your right foot forward good let's five times straighten both legs and bend both legs so push up straighten exhale okay so this is working the legs bend inhale you can always grab a block, straighten, exhale, bend, inhale. Because I don't want to make a big deal out of legs today. Straighten, bend, inhale, and straighten, exhale. Got a nice flat back, bend, inhale. So nothing changes in the back and the ribs. I'm just looking forward. And then we're going to do this one more time and straighten and hold. Well, now everybody's different. Some folks want to, might want to put their hand on an on a ottoman, a chair, something like that. You can put the block way out in front and then just bow the head down. It is a hamstring stretch. Yes, three, breathing, two. I told a class the other day to realize that the second half of all arm balances is the ability to operate your legs, right? Bend and one. Prasarita. Parutanasana or Pariyasana. <laughs> party on. Party on. Pariyasana. So this is fairly wide. Relax your neck. Oh, let go with your shoulders. And hey, lean. Lean a little of your body weight forward. I, I, I tell you, the more acquainted you are with falling, that the more flexible you're becoming. That's, that's when it's all starting to work. Right? If, you, if you keep holding yourself from the floor, you won't get flexible, right? Let's turn to the left. Mm -hmm. And come on down, all fours. All right. That means the right leg is going to straighten out behind us. Are you with me? Say yes, you're with me. Okay, great. So here it is. The right leg goes back low. The right knee comes high like high above the elbow. Now you're going to have to let yourself down to the ground and then straighten the left leg behind you and look how the booty goes up, the booty, yes, that's a real word. The buttocks, the rear end. The main thing is that you understand is you're creating pressure with your arms. So here's my right leg. I bring the knee in, right? It's not just letting yourself down because I see some people do this. And that's like, mm, I don't think that's it. <laughs> I mean, my leg is up, but my buttocks isn't. And then how are you getting out? There's no way to get out of it. So at the end of the day, it's kind of a push-up. Let's do two more. Right leg straight. The knee comes above the elbow. Your head and your shoulders do go down, but your hips go up. And then you can push into the back foot and lift the back knee. This is a modification for Kundanyasana. One more time right leg you'd have to get very good very comfortable with the modification before the expectation of the full pose right and push up and back we'll do this just once more just once more here i go here i go here and yes head and shoulders go down and then the rear leg is lifting and the body is on the elbows fantastic grab your block step the left foot forward Good, both knees straight. Inhale, exhale, and straight. Uh, uh, now, both knees bent, both legs straight. Good, and then inhale, push back, exhale. And bend, inhale, and push back, exhale. You've got it, work with me, please. Bend, inhale, push back, exhale. Work on it and bend, inhale, push back, exhale. So, right, you heard me say, maybe you have like a, an ottoman. Let me get my, my little ottoman here. These, this height 
This type of tool is excellent for working on your staggered stances, parjvottanasana, splits, things like that. Your arms are up with your ears, but you know, you're still getting maximum stretch. It doesn't matter where your hands go. Right on, right on, and then prasarita, paratanasana, pardiasana. <laughs> Inhale, exhale. Look halfway up, please. Inhaling, turning to the right side. Lunge, plank, chaturanga vinyasa. Upward, facing dog, and downward, facing dog. Left leg lift, left knee to the nose, left leg lift, left knee to the left elbow, modify by letting your head down, modify kundanyasana or the full pose. This is still modified because the top leg is still bent. Good, then from here, right leg lift, step the right foot forward, lunge. Prasarita Padatanasana Pardiasana. <laughs> Look halfway up, inhaling. Turn to the left side, Chaturanga Vinyasa. Mm -hmm. So definitely a lot of work in the upper body here today. And downward facing dog. Right leg's gonna lift. Right knee to the nose. Why bring the knee to the nose? If you can't get it to your nose, you're going to have trouble with the arm balance. Right leg lift, right knee above the elbow. Let your head down and push your buttocks up. And then lift the leg. Then downward dog. Left leg lift. Left foot step forward lunge. Prasarita Palatanasana. Breathe and relax. Oh, good, good. Turn to the right side. Bend your knees down and take the child's pose. Yeah, we'll do all of that again, we will. We will do all of that again. Good, 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 and come on up. You're feeling the wrist, tricep, front shoulder, and uh, all, of, all of that mechanism has to be strong for these poses. You see the twisted crow is sort of like a twisted kundanyasana, so we're gonna put that in with the sun salute, but let's do this whole section again. Modify, keep your knees down until you're strong enough to get the legs up. How do the legs go up? How do the legs fly? The legs are flying because of your ability to push enough pressure into the floor. So you're pushing into the floor and I know that sounds strange because in most cases, your head is going down. Well, how am I pushing into the floor as my head goes down, right? So the head goes down, the elbows go bending, but then once you are here, it's the pressure. You're generating, generating pressure into the floor and that's how the legs go up. You can't jump there. I, did you think that? Were you thinking that? Let me show you. You can't. I know. It won't work anyway. Anything that jumps up is going to come down. So if you get here and you're thinking, I know, I'll jump. Look how it, it just comes down. That won't work. I like it. I, kind of, I like where you're going, but I can't buy what you're selling there. Let's try the sequence. You're in downward facing dog. I think that was a good rest. I wanted to give you a good rest. So here it is. Left leg lift. All right, we got that. Left knee to the nose. Remember, if the knee and the nose have trouble coming together, you'll have trouble with arm balances. Left leg lift. Left knee above the elbow. I'm turning my body and resting my ribs on my right elbow. And then you can fly the legs. And in fact, when you generate the right amount of pressure, you can do whatever you want with your legs. Downward dog, left leg lift. Mm -hmm. That foot comes down. Right leg lift. Step the right foot forward, lunge. Prasarita, Padottanasana. Inhale, exhale. Arms, arms, lots and lots of arms. Triceps are burning. Push up. 
Turn to the left side, Chaturanga Vinyasa. We like that. Mm -hmm. Upward facing dog. That's really a push up. Upward facing dog. Inhale. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Here's our little our little sequence today. Right leg lift. Inhale. Right knee to the nose. Be kind. Be patient. Be wondering. Always a journey like that. I'm wondering why is it my knee doesn't come. Don't get upset if the knee doesn't come to your nose. Just go, oh, that's interesting. Look at how I'm going to let my left rib drop down onto my left elbow. And then it's from there you can do whatever you want by generating pressure into the floor. Downward facing dog. Left foot, uh, right foot comes down. Left leg lift. Left foot step. Prasarita Padottanasana. And look halfway up, jump to the center. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You are doing it. Now what about this twisted crow and kundinyasana, things like that. Now before we do that, let's work on a very interesting pose. You're gonna love it. Flying pigeon. Mm. Let's work flying pigeon from a grounded position. Grounded, we're already down to the floor, squatting on toes. The first thing we have to get is crossing the right ankle on top of the left. Oh, okay, well that could be a problem already. That, that could be an issue just here. You feel the ligaments in the left knee are, oh my God, being stretched, right? So we don't wanna stay there too long. Good, turn your knees back towards me and just take a twisted crow. All right, so if we don't like the pre preparation, uh, we're probably not gonna like the pose. Now look, I'm working to keep my knees bent in. A lot of students wanna start to try to do things with your legs, and I'm, I'm not a believer in that. The, the, the more you squeeze in, oh my goodness, just the, the tighter and deeper you can become. I'm gonna tell you that the day that you decide to open out your legs will just, it will, it will, it will feel like a dream. It will, it will feel like a dream. It will feel like a, the, the ease of a flower unfolding. So here we are, we wanna take a little quarter turn to the left, lift up, cross your left ankle on top. Oh my goodness, yes, the ligaments of the right knee getting a huge stretch. So if your knee is cranky, you know, you're sitting on a block, just trying this, I just want to tell you, you got to have a really good knee to approach this pose from here. Yes, and the feet come down. Let's face each other. And again, I have a lot of videos showing you, you know, but different ways to get into these poses. Here's your twisted crow. So look, I spend a lot of time, oh my gosh, leaning in, twisting in, hugging in. Don't start trying to do stuff with your legs, you're gonna lose it. You have to feel like you can just fall asleep here. Feel the twist, it's the IT band being tight. That's what makes it hard. Let's have a seat. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Sitting, let's work on the external rotation required for flying pigeon. And what we wanna do is hold on to your right foot. Ah. And we've got to get the right foot over to this left shoulder. So five times, we're going to inhale, exhale, pull in, whoa, inhale, exhale, pull in, <laughs> inhale, exhale, pull in. External rotation is just like your pigeon pose. Two more, inhale and exhale. One more, inhale, exhale, not overdoing it. Just want to get the idea and then we'll change legs five times. What's this all about? It's, it's the same thing. It's a drill. It's a teaser to show you what you can expect out of the final pose. Inhale, exhale. If you can't get the knee to your shoulder, like there's just like a lot of resistance to that idea, the pose is gonna be harder. So we get to lower the expectations on the pose. The pose is flying pigeon. Right? Inhale, exhale. Okay, this is alternating 
pigeon poses with a sweeping leg. So your right foot is in front and your left foot is back. I'm gonna take this left leg, sweep it forward. Oh, I've gotta get, you've gotta get your right leg over here on the right. And now the left leg is going to sweep back and forward, one. Sweep back, look at the rolling property, and forward. Sweep, sweep a long straight leg back and then roll and forward. This is very hard for many people. Two more, two, two, two. and look how I'm leaning. Gonna have to lean and then roll the leg and press up. Yeah. And then take one more, that leg goes back. I'm gonna lean and roll. Now look at the final position here. This foot is way out in front. I'm leaning into the right hand. You can push up, you can use blocks. I'm gonna push up, reroute the pose, get my arms out in front. Push the chest up, inhale, and like a push-up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up. So this is working the legs, exhale down, it's true. Inhale up, exhale down. One more, inhale up, exhale down. Well, pigeon stretch, let's change sides. Remember what I said, I said it a couple of times in today's class. Arm balances are all about generating the right amount of pressure in the upper body while also commanding your legs. So there's two pieces. If you can't command the legs, you won't be able to send the legs where you want them to go after you have established the pressure from the upper body. If you don't have the strength in the upper body right, to put pressure into the floor, then it doesn't matter how flexible your legs are. That's why I think a lot of people try to jump, is they realize their legs can get there, but they can't push the right amount of pressure. So this is about wielding the legs, moving the legs around. Let's go forward. One, and back, roll, and two, and back. Three, if you're having trouble keeping a straight leg and back, that is going to be a problem in arm balances. Three, right? I know that doesn't make sense, I know. But the lengthening of the leg and the arm balance is muy, 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 muy importante. When the knees bend, when the legs get soft and the knees bend, let's go here and hold the stretch, maybe bow down over it. When the legs get soft, when the legs collapse and get soft and don't feel their job, arm balances are almost impossible. They're almost impossible. You have to direct to operate the legs. Okay, let's come on around here, facing your right side, downward facing dog. You're almost done for today. Inhale, exhale. So here we are, downward facing dog. Look at the middle of your mat. And let's jump there just once. Bend the knees, jump. Straight legs, forward fold. A nice, easy, simple, light jump. We'll stand all the way up, inhaling. Yeah, you did. Cross the right ankle over the left. Now I'm gonna take a little quarter turn here and cross the right ankle over. Right, modified flying pigeon. The modification is bending in until your hands are on the floor and oh, look at the foot, look at the foot, right next to my shoulder, five, four, right next to my shoulder, three, two, and a one. Let's stay facing quarter turn this way, stand all the way up, inhaling, and hands on your hips, left ankle cross, mm-hmm, Squatting, squatting down. And squatting, 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 squatting down. Oh, and hey, look at the foot right next to my shoulder. Gotta get the hands to the floor. Nice and flat if you want the arm balance. Three, breathing, two, breathing, and one. Good. Now to get this final pose, I'm gonna face all the way to the right, 
Stand all the way up, inhaling, hands on my hips. Here we go. Last pose of the day. Right ankle on top. What are you thinking? Do you want the whole pose, part of the pose? There are many similarities to the crow pose. If you don't have the crow pose, you're gonna struggle here. So maybe just go to your modification, push into your hands, and you see that foot will come up and out. Three, two, one. Bring the knee in, put the foot down. Hey, straight legs forward fold. So that's stretchy, but you still have to put enough pressure in your arms to sustain the position. Here we go. Left ankle on top, you'll see it from this side. Look how much my standing knee is bending. It's very similar to the chair pose. Look at how the ribs come down over the shin bone. So that's your modification, tuck down in there. Flat hands to the floor, generate pressure, and then the leg comes out. Three, two, and one. Bring the knee in underneath you, the foot goes down, straight legs, forward fold. Ah, okay, let's come on down and have a seat. Well, what did you think? This is a very, very tough class, I know. And I, every now and then, just get into a class like this, really so that everyone can set their expectations when you're in a vinyasa class. Uh, someone asked me the other day, they uh, saw the title on, uh, it's a, this is an Equinox class, and the title of the class is Athletic Yoga. And she said, oh, can, can beginners do that class? And I said, well, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm really into beginners, just dive on in, gotta get to the water someday, right? And I said, sure. Uh, she said, well, I saw the video, and she said, they're doing arm balances and handstands and all of this acrobatic stuff. I said, well, that's the, that's the end result of the work. So I try to get folks to set an expectation. You have to start somewhere kind of understanding how it is that arm balances happen. And then lots of push-ups. I said, I do a lot of drills as we did today in this online, this uh, Facebook class, a lot of repetitions. Yes, a lot of drills. And then you're realizing if you don't like the drills, you don't like the repetitions, it's going to be very, very hard for you to get into the post. That's all right. It's all good. Like, be kind to yourself psychologically. So there's something that you want that's going to be hard to get. All right, what's new? What's new in the world? Right? right? Everything desirable. Oh, I want, you know, I want that fast car. You know, and okay, well, I'm going to get it on a credit card. And it makes it easy at first until it's come time to pay the piper. So arm balances are like that fast car, like that expensive vacation, right? You can do some things, make it seem easier at first, but you have to make the payments into the plan. Set your expectations. Know how many payments you can make to get there. And then carry on and have a good time. So I hope you enjoyed today's class, Vinyasa Flow Yoga on Facebook. I will put this down on YouTube, youtube.com slash C slash Yogi Cecily. Please subscribe, comment, and share my posts with your friends. Likewise on Instagram, again, it's subscribe, comment, share, right? I want to know and even save, save, save some of the videos, some of the tips, some of the memes so that you make your own little library of things that you can go back and see. You don't have to remember what day I posted it, right? Again, I'm Yogi Cecily. Hope to see you all soon. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.